uh, following Set Kwame Boateng's documentary, and we know the first lady stepped into it. We saved enough money to start the structure for the mother baby units at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, and I promised you that we're going to share pictures uh, of the structure where it's got into. But first of all, let's link up with Set Kwame Boateng. We know the Health Ministry Summit that started on Monday will be climaxed today. Set Kwame Boateng has been uh, in Cape Coast. He, he has uh, been in Cape Coast all this while, and he's joining us live. So first of all, good morning to you, Seth. Seth? If you can hear me. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Seth Kwame Boateng. Uh, before I even ask how today is going to go in Cape Coast, I want us to talk about Confanoti Teaching Hospital because I realize you have posted some pictures of where the structure uh, has got into. So we're going to be rolling those pictures on the screen. Tell us about where we've got into with this project, Save Them Now, the campaign. Okay, okay. So the contractors uh, had told us that they were going to complete that facility um, ending of um, ending of October, so possibly ending of October or first week in November, the first lady and possibly the president will be in Kumasi to commission the Confinochi project. Uh, <laughs> it's going on well, uh, so those watching TV can see the structures. They are uh, almost reaching the lentil stage, and very soon they're going to do the roofing. And yes, we got the money. Uh, but as, as you know, the plan is to fix other hospitals. So if we get more, we will appreciate is the reason we're still running the Save a Child, Save a Mother campaign. So we're going to do that. And the first lady had told us that from Kumasi, uh, she is targeting Kolobu before she moves to, to other uh, regions. But interestingly, coming yeah. here, Mamavi, um, um, I, I, I don't, don't know, know how some, some of the health workers got to know me. I meet some of them, they are like, what you are doing, Kumasi, we need the same in our region. And it's been like that wherever I've been. And, uh, you know, I've been with the health minister since Monday, uh, meeting health uh, officers, interacting with them, inspecting health projects in the central region. But before I speak about that more, I'm privileged to have with me here the regional minister of central region, uh, teacher Kwamna Duncan, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Once a teacher, always a teacher. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, I think that you come into this region with a lot of uh, nostalgic mm. feelings because uh, yeah. uh, this is where it all started. Yeah. And uh, you left here having uh, groomed yourself up and having determined to go to the world to contribute to your quota. And you haven't gone that far, but what you have added onto the world uh, is amazing. And uh, I use this opportunity also to pat you on the back. <laughs> We've been following your exploits and you are doing quite well. And uh, I mean, I think that there will be a day where we'll, give, we'll be given the opportunity to speak on the things that you have done so far. Mm. But for now, it's a different ball game. So let's go to where... I'm, I'm grateful. <laughs> so you have been in, in office for some months now. How has it been? Well, it's been uh, what I call a, a little challenging. But uh, we always have had the strength of character to uh, face it. Uh, the major thing that... Uh, confronts, especially I'm sure this government is uh, unemployment. Any, any, any ministry you go, I'm sure the minister will tell you that one thing that uh, young people have been pressing them with is uh, finding jobs. And it's no different from those of us in the region, especially we are closer to the people. So do they come here? Every blessed day, every blessed day, uh, you see young people who are ready to work and yet uh, the opening, the job opening or openings are not there. And you feel it deep in your spirit and your soul that we ought to do something. And I can tell you also that we have had opportunity to have a ministerial retreat, a four-day, five-day retreat, and it's uh, topmost on this government's agenda. And so we want to use this uh, big forum here to assure young people that Government is working very, 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 very closely and, uh, I mean, working very hard on, on this. And uh, very soon, uh, programs and policies will be rolled out, uh, which will make job openings available to, 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 to young people. But aside uh, the, 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 the issue of unemployment, I think that you also have um, what I call uh, projects which have been started and uh, left off, and uh, it's scattered 
virtually in all the districts. And my view as minister is this, that uh, government must take a close look. We ourselves in our manifesto, we promise that we're going to do audit of all such projects and to ensure that we get them completed even before we start new ones. And I think that that is the way to go. Because if you start projects uh, and you're unable to complete them, then you start uh, new ones. It is just money being thrown down the, the drain. Mm. And so I will recommend, uh, using this uh, powerful uh, platform, that uh, we rather focus more on completing uh, such projects. Instead such of building more. Instead of. Because instead if we even succeeded in getting these ones completed, I tell you, to a very large extent, to ameliorate the, the, the plight of our, of, our, of our people. And so that is one thing that a uh, zooming office in the region has seen. And um, I want to... Uh, somebody may say, you are in government. Uh, so, yes, we are in government, I see it, uh, but we are talking to those higher us so that we rather focus our, mi our minds on ensuring that we finish such projects and sort of uh, begin uh, new ones. Again, there's also uh, a directive that we halt all such projects, especially those ones on the, on the GET Fund. Uh, some kind of audit is going on, and that when that is done, then uh, the, 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 the green light will be given for us to, to, to go on with it. So I'm using this opportunity to tell our uh, people there All right, uh, apologies there. We just uh, uh, lost the link to Seth Kwame Boateng, who, who was speaking just a while ago to the Central Regional Minister, Kwame Nat Duncan. We're going to link up with him again. Seth Kwame Boateng is my colleague in the Central Region. He's been there uh, for that health summit, which would be climax later today. So let's just rejoin him quickly with the Central Region Minister. Have visited, uh, they have mentioned how it's been difficult uh, for them getting people to leave their, their, their lands. What are you doing as the region minister? Because it appears they are looking up to you to intervene. Yeah, yeah amazing. Uh, it's not just the hospitals, but virtually all government lands, even including our own here, uh, regional, the regional coordinating, council. coordinating council. People are building, encroaching. Uh, encroaching. And uh, the fact is this that uh, some of these things you cannot use. Uh, 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 force, so you have to go to. No, but it's not there. So why wouldn't you yes, use force? Yes. Uh, even if, even if uh, you take note of this, even if they are encroaching, you still have to have the strength of the the, the, the decision of the court to be able to enforce it. But when, for example, when you go to Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, mm -hmm. they have that court support, the mm -hmm. order that they can go ahead and get them off the land. Yes. Once that has been secured, then we can ask the security agencies to provide the necessary uh, 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 support for those uh, structures to be demolished. Mm -hmm. uh, but on your land, even when somebody does that patently, you still have to have the, the strength of the force. To be Human able to face, as they say. Uh, sometimes, yes, you may put it that way. And again, uh, he or she may have also acquired it in some way. Mm -hmm. And so you have to put it before the law for the law to determine. And then when the law has determined, then you can have your way clear to be able to do what you are supposed to do. You know it, I mean, uh, that all over the place, if somebody encroaches on your, on your land, what usually you do is to go to court mm. and to let the court see what has happened. You don't take the, the, the law into your hands and you begin to, mm. to, do, to do it. And so uh, anywhere that government land has been encroached, we have the schools as well. We have told them that, look, Let's use the, 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 the legal procedure. And when we have the strength of legal uh, procedures behind us, mm. then we will also ask the security agencies to go in to demolish them. I can, I, I can, I can tell you that since I assume in office, as many as four or five schools have written to my office complaining about this encroachment. But luckily for us, the last uh, graduation by College of Education, Ola College of Education, the senior minister was there. And he said that this is a matter that has come that up even to cabinet. And the cabinet has taken a decision on that, that they are going to go all out to ensure that all such government lands are protected. Mm -hmm. So he directed that all such places where encroachment is going on, they should route it through my office to his office mm -hmm. so that government begins to uh, take it. Where it requires that we get the police in to demolish we'll it because so. we are, that one we will not waste time at all. We'll do so. Okay. So let's move to maternal health. Um, uh, yesterday, the health minister had caused to complain 
to health officers he met yesterday in their review about how the speed with which maternal deaths uh, is rising here in the central region and taxed the health officers to do more to make sure the figures come down. Are you aware of this? And what can you do in your little corner to help bring this down? Well, I'm aware. Uh, on assumption of office, I have had the opportunity to sit through two of such uh, reviews. The regional directorate itself did the all right, we just lost the link to set Kwame Boating and Kwame Nadankan, the central regional minister. Hopefully we get to reconnect with them just before we wrap up. Uh, two questions I also want to put to Mr. Kwame Nadankan. Uh, so just shortly, we're going to have our connection to Cape Coast again. But still ahead, we'll bring you some entertainment with Becky Ketsi Etel. Let's go back to Cape Coast now. has become dysfunctional or that the equipment that they need that they, they not, were using to help fight maternal mortality that's right they are not getting it mm. uh -huh. so that is one thing that is uh, working against this whole fight of um, ensuring that we reduce uh, the rate of uh, maternal mort mortality and so those things were to be forwarded to the ministry mm. so it's good and proper that the minister himself is in a region i saw you on television where he visited the teaching hospital and i thought that he had uh, visited the uh, appropriate place and that all these matters, uh, even uh, through the report, if he did not have the opportunity to see it, now directly on the ground, he will, he will see it. So I'm sure uh, our part as a government, we need to do it. We need to get the equipment, we need to give them the tools. If we're able to do all of those things, then again, the other side of the coin will be to ensure that the personnel also commit themselves into doing what is proper and right so that we save our mothers who go to, who go to, who go to give birth. Mama B, I heard you say that you have two questions for Mr. Kwamna Duncan. Yeah, that's Mama B. <laughs> Mama B. Uh, you know, you started on the teacher notes. I want to, I want his take on the licensing, mm. the exams for teachers. Licensing the exam for teachers. Mm -hmm. So, Sir Kwame, I, 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 I want his take on. I want him to tell us what he makes of. Uh, uh, you know, this whole conversation around giving teachers a, prof a professional license before they can step into the classroom to teach. Taking that exams to All get right. that license. Mamabi wants me to find out <laughs> your thought on um, giving professional teachers the license to, to, to <laughs> execute what they are supposed to, as in before they can practice. What's your take on that? Well, uh, uh, it's a dicey it's a, one, right? It's a dicey matter. I mean, um, if you look at other professionals, if you look at uh, the medical professionals, indeed the medical and uh, dentist council, uh, indeed give them license. If you look at uh, pharmacists, yes, they are also licensed. If you look at architects, uh, engineers, they are all licensed. So that uh, one way is to more or less uh, give a certain image to the profession and also to close doors by which people may decide to uh, filter in, uh, that is to say, to get off uh, quack people from getting into a profession. So uh, licensing is a way to protect the profession itself. But in going about it, there's the need for thorough consultation. You need to have all the, the, the teaching unions all together sit around the table. And it must not be one that uh, people may hear it out of the blue, bang, that something like that is coming. It, it has to be over a period of time where you have consulted with all stakeholders and they have seen the need. And even not just consultation at the leadership level, that they themselves also go down to do consultations with their following, with their members. So you are for it? Yeah, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying that it must be done in a manner mm. that will not make it appear that it is intended to get some people out of the way. Mm. Uh, I'm sure the fear is just that, well, you're going to do this, and in this year and era where the public service is choked, mm. uh, people may say that, oh, you may want to use this to just block people from continuing to, to work in the public service. I'm sure that is not the rationale. The rationale, the minister, uh, if I understood him, is just to protect the profession mm. and to ensure that we don't get quack uh, teachers in there. But I'm saying that it has to be done uh, with the stakeholders over a period of time when everybody has come to buy into it that, look, the advantages are more, and therefore willingly, let's then begin the process. That, for me, is the way to go. Mm. Mama v, so that was the Central Regional Minister. No, not um, quite. Not quite. Not, not uh, quite. Not quite. Minister. 
not quite just the final one that he can run you're not convinced the, no 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 just the final question okay, okay. My, the second and final one is on public schools closing at 4 p.m what is the stake <laughs> and and your take on public schools closing at 4 p.m <laughs> ma, ma, mama mama says that uh, she's not convinced on what i said oh no she's okay now but she also wants to know your take on public schools closing at 4 p.m you know the education minister said they've been closing very early and uh, he believes that it has to be pushed <laughs> To four. Well, well, your take on that uh, as, as, a, uh, as a teacher? Yes. It, it is not when you close. It is the normal of uh, contact hours. Uh, you know, uh, the old system where we were product of uh, the Saito system, we went in the morning and closed around, I think, uh, 12 noon or 12.30 thereabout. And then we went back home to refresh and all of that. And then back to school and then closed around 4 o'clock. That is the old system, the Saito system. Uh -huh. But if you sat and you calculated the contact hours, whether it was more than today where you have uh, one stretch. Mm. So the, the, the real thing is about the number of contact hours. I'm sure that is where the minister wants us to avail our minds to. Mm. So if we do the calculation and see that the one stretch has more contact hours, then it might not be necessary for us to close at, at, at 4, 4 p.m. And again, don't forget also uh, that the, the human brain has a certain uh, capacity mm. that if you decide to overstretch it, more and more and more. It gets to a point uh, where we say it has reached the carrying capacity. It's unable to take on more. Yet we are encouraging vacation classes. Uh, pupils or students are on vacation. They are supposed to relax their brains. And they have been asked to compulsorily um, uh, enroll uh, vacation classes. Well, uh, there, there are two sides to this. Two sides is this, that uh, vacation is meant for rest. Mm. Uh, but again, if you, young people, if you fail to find something for them, uh, something will naturally get into their hands. So uh, going for the vacation classes, my view is this, that I would have wished that they rested. But uh, going there also, whether you like it or not, uh, the syllabus uh, and then the period which uh, they have to uh, exhaust them in schools. I tell you, I've been a teacher for uh, virtually all my adult life. And there's no way uh, with a three-year period you'll be able to adequately treat all the, the things required in the syllabus. So the vacation classes uh, somehow create space for some topics which otherwise may not have been treated in a normal uh, school stream to be done there at, at, at vacation class. And again, it also somehow uh, brings uh, students from all backgrounds and uh, from various schools. They share uh, some kind of uh, idiosyncrasies and all of that. It adds on to them. But ordinarily, uh, I think that the essence of vacation is for them to rest. But exigencies may... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Mama, I hope I hope you are convinced uh, enough. No, no, no. I am good. I am good. I am good. I'm good. Thanks to him. All right, and yeah. um, he will soon be joining the health minister in a news conference. The health minister is, will be addressing the media in central region. So very soon, that is going to start. And Mama, be going around with the health minister. What has come up? One other thing uh, that came up was the quota system mm. uh, to our uh, nursing training colleges. And it's strange how uh, tutors in some of these training colleges. Are happy government is doing this. Uh, they believe um, it's going to help them um, take the trainees through mm -hmm. proper practicals. Okay. There are some cited situations whereby they go for practicals and you find about 60, 50 students mm. or trainees on one patient, which is not good for them. Okay. So they so, said that that really affected quality. Okay. Uh, so they are happy government is embarking on. And they also been speaking about how where private nursing training colleges are springing up. They okay. are not happy with that. All right. I'm uh, sure we'll the get a lot more. Is what mm -hmm. matters, according oh. to them. All right. I'm sure we'll get a lot more plus the press conference later on on News Desk. Set Kwame Boateng, thanks uh, Thank very you, much. Uh, my colleague Set Kwame Boateng in the central region giving us a live report and an interaction with the central regional minister, Kwame Duncan. <laughs>